when we talk about requirement classification, we understood what a requirement is in the context of the uh, product development or process initiative or a change management program. Um, so business requirements, there are different types of re requirements in the context of uh, product development. We talk, we talk about business requirements and, and we talk about, for example, solution requirements. We have non-functional requirements. So we'll, we'll talk about all of these as you know, different types or different categories of requirements. So the first one is business requirements. So when we talk about business requirement, as, it, as the name suggests, it is about the, um, the way that you would deliver value to the business. So it would mean that the goals, the objectives, the strategic um, you know, uh, objectives of this particular you know, business or business unit or the entity, and what are the outcomes that are going to come out from the prescribed solution or the offering that we have got to say. <coughs> so those are basically what we call as uh, business requirements. So you're not looking at a specific solution attribute, but you're looking at the overall context of how that would benefit the, the business. Is it going to increase revenue? Is it going to decrease the cost of um, the operation? Is it going to save us some expense? All of these that, that would be the, that would be, that can be defined as the business requirement. And, and bear in mind that they're applicable at both micro level as well as macro level initiatives. So it doesn't mean that it is only applicable at the big enterprise level initiative. Even a simple small program to create a mobile application um, that has, has a significant um, impact in terms of how that could lead to the um, you know, customer satisfaction directly. You're, you're increasing the customer satisfaction because the customers have got mobile phones now in the hands all, all the time. So having a mobile app on their, on their phone would be um, you know, benefiting the customers because you are trying to you know, ha give them an option to use your product on the go. That means your customer satisfaction is improving. And because your customer satisfaction is increasing or improving on over a period of time, you're actually trying to contribute that to the customer loyalty because they're sticking to your product, your business. And the stickiness and the loyalty would actually, again, in turn, you know, relate to the increase in the sales because you know, the retention, customer retention is directly leading to increased sales and reduced expenses because you're not really spending more time in advertising and budget and promotion and everything else. So you're actually in effect directly that small um, decision to create the, business, the mobile app has actually led to the business requirement of increasing the sales by let's say 20% from the retention from the retained customers or loyal customers. So very, very important. So in that context, what we're trying to look at is the, um, the entire gamut of what we're trying to do, what products do we have, what kind of services we have, what is um, the set of processes we have at the moment, how we can improve the processes, and what kind of solution we're trying to look at, any custom solution that we're trying to develop for our customers, for users and stakeholders, and how all of them, all of these different offerings as what we call, how all of these different offerings are going to benefit and help our brand equity, our brand as, a, as, a, as an image of an identity of a brand of our own organization. How is it going to increase the goodwill you know, in a, either in a direct or indirect way? We need to consider these, all of these would be the business requirements 